All right, here it is. This is assignment 7J. 7J is very similar to the previous assignment that we just got done doing. However, uh, this is probably going to involve a lot more cosecants and secants and cotangents and things like that. Um, I did include a sheet that has a lot of the important derivatives and integrals uh, dealing with uh, trigonometry and inverse trigonometry things. Um, this is in the front of your book, so uh, this is exactly where I, I, I took this information from. So you can take a look at the front of your book. Um, and when I was first learning, uh, you know, trigonometry, de derivatives and uh, integrals and things like that, uh, this, it takes you a long time. It takes you a long time to kind of get the hang of it, kind of like get uh, get what these formulas are. And it does take a lot of looking up and trying to learn a little bit more and looking it up and learning a little bit more. Uh, but eventually it kind of becomes um, like almost one of those second natures and you have you have a sense of what something might be just because, you know, practice, practice, practice. So right now, if you need to use your reference sheet or if you need to use your book, oh my gosh, please do that. Please do that again, but uh, in an effort to become a little bit more independent. So each time you use it, try to remember um, like a little thing. Like I, I remember you always have to stop at the sign, right? You always have to stop at the sign. So um, what I what I say is like, okay, when you see something kind of a little bit confusing, like one minus u squared, Oh, that's confusing. Subtractions are confusing. I gotta stop at the sign. Okay, I gotta stop at the sign. Oh, if it looks really easy, looks really easy. One plus u squared. What could get easier than that? That's really easy. I can just lay back and get a tan. All right, I can lay back and get a tan. And uh, so I kind of remember it kind of those ways. Um, and then the codes are always negative. And then um, when it comes to the world of trigonometry, or excuse me, integration, and I'm talking about inverses, they're pretty much the same thing. And, but instead of the uh, number one, they're usually a squares. And um, the sign, even though it, it's difficult up front, you don't get the one over a kind of idea. And so again, these are just little things that you kind of pick up along the way and kind of make your world a little bit easier. Now, I don't know if we're actually doing any derivatives or integrals in this particular uh, problem or in this particular worksheet, but I know we will be in the next few. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get started and uh, find the derivative of this stuff. Okay, so we know that the derivative, okay, we are actually taking the derivative of the cosine of u, Okay, this is similar to the sine. So this is the one minus u squared version, okay, with the u prime. All right, so that's what the derivative of a cosine just straight up is as far as the formula is concerned. Now, equating this to what we have, we see that u, okay, we see that u is x squared. So let's go ahead and see what we need. So if u is x squared, that would mean uh, u prime would be 2x, and uh, u squared would be um, uh, x to the fourth. All right, so this uh, derivative, so the derivative of cos inverse cosine x squared is going to be one over one minus u squared square rooted times u prime. And so what they usually do is they move these two x's to the numerator. Okay, easy peasy. All right, so the tangent Okay, the derivative of a tangent, or an inverse tangent, I should say. 
so easy I can sit back and get a tan. It's easy peasy. All right. So u in this situation is 3x. That means u prime is 3. And then u squared is what? 9x squared. So here we go. The derivative of what? 3 or 5, excuse me, 5 inverse tangent. 3x is going to be equal to, okay, so it's going to be 5 times 1 plus u squared times u prime. All right, so this is going to be 15. Okay, the derivative of sine <clears throat> you gotta stop at the sine so here we see u is equal to one half x that means u prime is equal to one half and uh, u squared is one-fourth x squared. So the derivative of inverse sine one over two x is one plus, excuse me, one minus u squared we're probably going to have to adjust this here just a little bit. Over um, uh, u prime on the side, so u prime is one half. All right. Okay, so I see what's going to happen here. All right. Thinking about this, uh, this inside right here the, of the bottom. Okay, I can GCF out a one-fourth, so this would be 4x squared, all right? So I can GCF out that. A square root of one-fourth is one-half, so I can say that this is one-half square root of 4 minus x squared on the denominator. Okay, so if this is on the inside of the square root, I can take out that square root of the, of the one-fourth portion. All right, so what that does is that leaves one half four minus uh, x squared underneath one half, and you can see the logical step here. All World be, would be easy if it wasn't for algebra, right? <clears throat> All right, secant. Let's see if I remember this. Uh, so secant is the one that I'm usually the worst at. <laughs> I don't remember it the best, but I think it's the absolute value of u, and then they have pity on us, and is it, I think it's u squared minus, minus 1. Yeah, minus 1. All right, so u in this situation is 5x. Uh, u prime is 5, u squared is 25x squared. <clears throat> so here we go. 
uh, you don't don't worry so much about that absolute value. Like, yes, it is technically an absolute value, but really don't worry about it all that much. U squared in essence underneath the U prime. So simplification right there. All right, a cosecant is the same thing as a secant, so the uh, derivative is exactly the same, except, all right, so it's going to be u, uh, u squared minus 1 underneath 1 would be u prime, except it's going to be a negative, so it's a negative. I'm not sure what is the more convenient version of that. So I, I'm thinking it's going to be the long polynomial because I think a one is going to cancel out and then we're going to have to do some uh, algebraic wizardry here. So let, let's go ahead and just see what we have. So right now we have x squared plus one. No need for an absolute value, or, uh, yeah, absolute value because that is automatically positive x squared is positive, plus positive one is positive, two is positive. You can keep it in that with that. Um, and this is going to be u squared. So I'll write this one out. So u squared minus one. So that's u squared minus one. All underneath negative u prime, which is in essence two minus. Okay. So things that I see that are going to happen, most of it is happening on the inside of the square root. First and foremost, I see these ones cancel, which frees up all these x's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an x squared, which leaves an x squared plus 2. And then if this is on the inside of the square root, I can take out an x of that square root. So the square root of an x squared is x. So this is x squared plus 2 left alone, and an x comes out. Now, when that x comes out, I can simplify with that numerator x that is there. And so I believe, that, long story short, this would be negative 2 x squared plus 1 of the square root of x squared plus 2. So these things are pretty much the same thing. Again, as uh, a reminder, the derivative, let's call it the secant, is going to be um, u, <clears throat> u squared minus 1 underneath 1 u prime. And then the uh, cosecant is the exact same thing, but a negative. So, and notice how they both have the same type of u. So u in here is the square root of x. All right, so, um, 
So u prime is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over square root x. I'm not sure what is going to be if you 2 square root x. I'm not sure which one is going to be more convenient. And then u squared is just straight up x squared is square root. All right, so taking the derivative of this, let's switch colors here. Um, I'm going to actually make this just a little bit easier because I feel like I'm going to be running out of room here real quick. All right, so let's go with the cosecant. The cosecant is um, u, which is the square root of x, which is going to be positive. Um, square root of x, square root, um, u squared uh, minus 1, all underneath u prime, which is 1 half, I'll go 1 over square root. is a negative. So this technically belongs to the denominator. So this is technically 1 over 2x, x minus 1. Because the square root of x multiplies the square root of x and negative 1. All right. And so this is going to be added to the positive version of this. That everything is the same except for the the negative sign. So this is going to be two x x minus one positive version, and so this is ultimately equal to zero. That'll work for a simple result. Gonna get into my answer key just here, just to make sure that I got the same answer twice. <laughs> yup. All right. All right. So the derivative of a cotangent. I don't know. I don't know what the derivative of the cotangent is. I believe, no, it is, it's a tangent. But a negative. <clears throat> Had a brain fart there for a second. All right, so here we go. So u in this case is uh, x minus 1 to the negative 1 half. Um, so that means u prime is going to be, uh, it's not to the negative one half, it's just to the regular one half. It's going to be one half x plus, excuse me, x minus one to the negative one half, um, and then chain rule times the one, do anything. And then uh, u squared is just uh, x minus 1. OK, so that is the groundwork. OK, so the derivative of this thing, the derivative of this thing is <clears throat> 1 plus u squared all over, or excuse me, all under, uh, negative u prime. So that'll be negative 1 half uh, square root of x minus 1. So again, this bit belongs to the denominator. What I notice currently in the denominator is the ones cancel out. 
So this will be 2x square root of x minus 1 underneath negative 1. Okay, I'm going to worry about the secant here. The, the other part is easy peasy. So the secant in this situation, the secant, derivative of the secant. The absolute value of u, u squared minus 1, the u prime. So in this particular problem, u is x, u prime is 1, u squared is x squared. So I'll handle that portion of the problem. Let's go ahead and handle that portion of the problem right now. So the derivative of the secant is going to be uh, u, uh, do, 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 u squared minus 1 underneath u prime, which is 1. Okay. And so that is being subtracted. Okay. I'll just kind of keep that as a mental note. Okay. The other portion of this problem is going to be the derivative of x squared minus 1 to the 1 half. Okay, so this will be a chain rule. So this is 1 half x squared minus 1, the negative 1 half times 2x. And so this instantly simplifies right here. So this is, long story short, x over square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, so that is the first part of this answer. So the first part of this answer is going to be x squared minus 1 squared rooted underneath uh, x. And then this is subtracting. All right, so this, I need to get a common denominator of an additional x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an x onto this left-hand side so that uh, gets a common denominator. Now I'm able to subtract. Let me get a little bit more room here. Okay, so this is going to be x squared minus 1 underneath uh, x, uh, x squared minus 1. And I'm assuming that x is positive. I, I think it actually you might have to keep the absolute value. I'm not sure. Um, and so, <clears throat> I see what I did. How the heck did I make this up? All right, this is to the one power. This is to the one half power. And it's, they're the same thing. So again, this is going to be a subtraction. So it's top minus the bottom. So one minus one half is just a positive one half. So that means this is ultimately to the positive one half power, which is a numerator of a square root. I'm not sure. Something like that. Uh, 
All right. Um, Well, I, I, like I, I would love to show you this one right right now, but uh, again, I this is going. It would take it takes way long. Take a look at the answer key of number nine. Um, <clears throat> take a look at the answer key of number nine. Uh, it, it works out, but good gravy, it's a lot of work to to get. Um, take a look at the answer key. We'll, we can talk about it in class. Um, but really, don't sweat number nine. So again, take a look at the answer key. I have everything uh, shown there. Um, yeah. I'm not going to worry about number nine. <clears throat> Okay, here they want us to use reference angles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> all right, so again, how I handle these things is I set these things equal to theta. So this is, in essence, going to be the regular cosecant of the angle is equal to negative square root 2. Cosecant is the reciprocal of uh, sine. So I take the reciprocal of both sides and that'd be negative one over square root two, or AKA negative square root two over two. So thinking about the unit circle and a sine, a sine is the Y coordinate. Where is a Y? A negative square root two over two. It would be down at negative pi over four. So theta in this case is negative pi over four. <clears throat> All right, so again, same idea. Um, well, I set this equal to theta. Uh, so this is, in essence, cosecant of theta. So cosecant of the angle is equal to negative 2 square root 3. So reciprocal of cosecant is a sine. So this is uh, negative square root 3 over 2. And so that's a big. So where is the y coordinate? negative big, y coordinate is negative big right here. Again, also take note that the sign exists from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. All right, so this would be negative pi over three technically. Okay, last but not least, you kind of see the pattern here. Uh, so this implies that this is cosecant of theta is equal to negative 2. The reciprocal on both sides would imply sine is equal to negative 1 half, which is a small. And so where is the y coordinate? Uh, small, a negative small, it's right there at negative pi over 6. Again, I figured out what alpha is. So alpha in this case is an angle. So I think of it as theta. And so this is going to be the inverse cosine of negative one half. All right, so cosine both sides. So cosine of theta, AKA cosine alpha is equal to negative one half. So this is, where is the x coordinate a negative small? The x coordinate is a negative small right here. Again, cosine exists in this world right here. That angle is at 2 pi over 3. Which is alpha. All 
right, so in essence, this question is asking what is sine of 2 pi over 3? So the sine, the y coordinate of that is big, so that's going to be square root of 3 over 2. What is the tangent of this? So that is going to be the sine over the cosine. Okay, so uh, the cosine is negative 1 half. The sine, as I just said, is square root of 3 over 2. So negative, the 2's cancel. Um, and so this is going to be negative square root of 3. Um, so this is going to be 1 over the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Um, so this is 1 over the cosine, which is <clears throat> negative 1 half. So reciprocal, this is negative 2. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Sine, again, was what? Um, square root of 3 over 2. So reciprocal of that would be 2 over square root 3, which is the same thing as 2 square root 3 over 3. Give you these all day long, they're easy peasy. Um, except for maybe this. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Um, Okay, this is when, when you're given some sort of measurement that isn't, um, you know, one of those like hunky dory kind of numbers, like, you know, it's square root of three over two or one half or something. You're going to have to create a triangle. All right, and so uh, what I see here is this I'll, I'll kind of walk and talk at the same time. So a secant. Inverse secant of negative square root 5 is equal to theta. All right, so that means secant of theta is equal to negative square root 5. Okay, uh, secant is an inverse uh, cosine, so inverse both of these. That means cosine of my angle is equal to negative 1 over square root 5. Um, and because it's a negative, this is implying quadrant two. This is implying quadrant two. Okay, um, so again, this is not a, a, a peachy keen kind of number. So what I do is I think of this cosine as being a hypothetical right triangle, and a cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this is, in essence, saying this is negative 1, and this is square root 5. All right, so I can uh, think of this um, as being, it, technically I should be thinking of this in quadrant 2, but that, maybe. Um, uh, let's go ahead and Pythagorean theorem the stuff out of this thing. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Okay, so b is 2. To be or not to be, right? All right, uh, so <clears throat> that's what that is. Again, this is quadrant 2, so the y-coordinate is positive. All right, so this is a true triangle. Now all that's left is to know your SOCATOA, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent, oh, uh, opposite over adjacent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is going to be 2 over root 5, or AKA 2 root 5 over 5, however you may want to look at it. Okay, so that's what the sine is. Cosine. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, so again, that would be negative root 5 over 5. 
Um, I'm just going to actually leave them as the like that, just for simplicity's sake. Um, yeah, just leave it like that. Tangent is uh, <clears throat> opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. Cosecant is uh, one over sine. Okay, sine again was uh, two over root five. All right, so um, this would be root five over two. Okay, so again, uh, if sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, then the cosecant would be hypotenuse over opposite. Okay, so if tangent is adjacent, uh, excuse me, opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. So adjacent over opposite. All right, so again, I think we have to use our triangle trick with these. Uh, so we begin with this uh, inside piece, tangent, inverse, I'll call that theta. So we call tangent negative one of two x equal to theta. So that means tangent of our angle is equal to two x, okay? Or two x over one might help you out a little bit better. Again, I, I have no idea what this means, but we can create a triangle. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that is implying that the hypotenuse of this is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared or hypotenuse squared. And so this is hypotenuse squared is equal to what, 4x squared plus 1, and then hypotenuse would then be the square root of that. Okay, that's our setup of theta. So that's what tangent is telling us. So tangent is equal to that theta. So the question is, what is secant of that? Okay, so uh, secant is one over cosine. So the cosine of this thing is adjacent over hypotenuse. So which is ultimately just the reciprocal. So this is going to be 4x squared plus 1 squared. Okay, so again, I'm going to do the same trick right here. So I see the tangent, inverse tangent of blah, 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 blah. I'm going to set that equal to theta. <clears throat> so that means tangent of theta is equal to x squared plus 1 underneath x. So that is uh, the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem. 
a squared, which is going to be x squared plus 1, plus b squared, which is x squared, is going to be equal to c squared. Um, so h is going to be equal to 2x squared plus 1 squared. <coughs> Okay, now the question is, well, what is sine of that theta then? Instead of uh, theta, now what is sine of that theta? Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. It's good enough for me. Right.